Okay, applications for differentiation of differentiations. Uh, if I were to say there are two main parts of this chapter, one is about extremum problem. Another one is about rate of change problem. So we can say there are two types of questions, right? Before I go further, I would like to talk to you a bit. What about what do you know about slope and gradient? What about slope and gradient? You dengar but you don't understand. You just blur. It's dy dx. What about turning point? Extremum point or stationary point. How do I put them in equations? It's where dy dx equals to zero. Okay, uh, of course, I think it has more names than that, but those are the ones that I can recall right now. I would like to illustrate to you a little bit what do I mean by turning point, extremum point, and stationary point. Please hold the clear. Okay, let's say you need to sit down. It's going to be very, very high. Okay. So, so let's say I'm taking this doctor. Which is not mine. That's very important. And I decided to throw it here. Okay. 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 Okay.
When he grows, he grows, he grows. Okay? And here's the tangent. Here's the dy dx. So that it will always be in circular. The, the stem needs to be in circle. So this, it, it grows in tangent. If it doesn't grow in tangent, tangent it means it only touch it once. Okay? The dy dx there. If, doesn't, if the tree does not grow in tangent, it might be something like this and where the stem does not grow well. Bi Maths exists in biology. <laughs> okay, alright, alright, never mind. I, I'm not sure about you. I, I was so shocked when I, when I know about it. Okay, let's go on. For the extreme problem, you need to recognize this thing. And then, you need to calculate a few things. Okay, I missed one more word. It's a critical point. This point here, this is, a, this is the turning point everything. What we are trying to find is the critical point. Normally, we differentiate, we got dy dx equals to zero, so now we want to find what's the value of x and y. The x and y is what we call the critical point, which can also be this thing. And then once you figure out whether it's the critical point, you want to know whether it's the maximum or the minimum critical point. So firstly, you need to find this one. And when you find the critical point, you are not sure is it maximum or minimum. In other cases, I can ask you, do you, do you remember the graph of x cubed? I have x cubed. Can you see that? Uh, if I go more, it would become x5. Now, we got here two turning points, am I right? So if we calculate them, we do dy dx equals to 0. Are you okay with it? dy dx equals to 0. But how do we know which one is maximum, which one is minimum? That's the moment where you need to differentiate one more time. d squared y dx squared not equals to 0. Then you substitute the critical point inside here. Now you got that your your final answers whether it's positive or negative. Now how do you memorize which one is minimum, which one is maximum? Which one you memorize positive is maximum or minimum? This max or mean? Positive is the minimum, negative is the maximum. Uh, how do you memorize that one? Well, what about this one? Uh, this is how I memorize things. What about x squared? Let's let for a little look. x squared graph. Smart, right? Negative x squared. Set. Okay, at positive x squared, let's put here. This is the what? Minimum point or maximum point? Minimum. So, minimum. What about negative x squared? This point is the maximum. So, maximum. That's how I memorize it out. Okay, hopefully it will be helpful for you because of course in exams things got things got mixed up yeah, and at the moment if thing uh, positive is maximum negative is minimum then you got things wrong right so these are one of the most common problem in exams the other one will be the rate of change 
The rate of change is the one that you need to use the chain rule. Where such as we got dv over dt. Yeah, it depends there. Come again. It depends on the question. What do you do? They, what do they want? My my advice: If you ever encounter a rate of change problem, take what equations you have. I mean, normally we want to find the volume. Normally, it can be a area as well. Dv dt, dv dt, and then you figure out what you need to put over there. All right, and, and it like I mentioned just now, it depends on the question. Sometimes you want dh, sometimes you want dr, sometimes it can even 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 go to d theta. So my advice is put dv dt, dv dt, and then you figure out from there. It depends on the questions. All right, so those are the basics go through for this chapter. And I can go through you for some examples. There are many, many, many examples, so it's pretty much impossible for us to cover all of them. So in other words, exercise is the best, best way to go. Understanding is the best way to go. In exams, pretty much you cannot figure out which type of question is going to come. So it's best for you to understand. All right? And as I mentioned before, practice makes right? practice makes you better. Nobody is perfect in this world. Only God is perfect. Understand that. Okay. All right, thank you.